30 Kadashim section 1 You shall be holy Rabbi Lazar begins by saying that on the day of heavenly judgment people will be found defective because they did not pay any attention to the Torah he adds that it is forbidden to associate with people who lack the faith and as for those who are not in a state of holiness at the time of intercourse they will produce offspring whose souls come from the side of defilement 1 and Hashem spoke to Moses saying speak to all the Congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy. Vay 191 to 2 Rabbi Lazar commenced the discussion. Be not like the horse or the mule which have no understanding. Tell him 329. How many times did the Torah attest to people? How many times did she raise her voice in every direction to awaken them? But all lay sleeping unaware of their sins. They do not look or pay attention to the time when they will rise up to face the day of heavenly judgment. At this time, the heavenly king will exact from them the shame of the Torah that cried out against them, and yet they did not even turn their face to her. All are found totally defective since they do not know of the faith of the heavenly king. Woe to them and woe to their souls too. For the Torah attests to him and says, Whoever is simple, let him turn in here as for he that lacks understanding. She says to him, Mishlei 94, who is meant by he that lacks understanding, this means one who has no faith and is defective in every respect he questions why is it written she says to him when it should read I say to him as the verse says I will say to El Myrach Tehillim 4210 so why does it say here she says he answers it which is to include and add the supernal Torah which also calls him he that lacks understanding meaning defective in faith 3 we have learned this it is forbidden to approach all who fail to toil in Torah and it is forbidden to be partners with him or do business with him and one must surely not travel with him on the way since he lacks faith we learned that one who walks along the road without mentioning words of Torah endangers his life this is all the more the case for he who befriends on the road someone who lacks faith because he himself does not properly honor his master nor even his own as he shows a lack of concern for his own life for Rabbi Yehuda said how will he who shows no concern for his own life namely by associating with one Lacking faith draw a proper soul to his son Rabbi Lazar said I wonder about this generation and this matter was discussed about this it is written be not like the horse or the mule which have no understanding Tehillim 329 happy are the righteous who strive in the Torah and know the ways of the Holy One blessed be he and sanctify themselves with the sanctity of the king they are in a total state of holiness for this reason they attract a spirit of holiness from above their children are truly righteous and are called the children of the king holy children five woe be to evildoers who are brazen and act with insolence at times of intercourse for this reason their offspring acquire a brazen soul from the side of defilement as it is written that you should be defiled by them Vayikra 1143 he who seeks to become unclean is made unclean be not like the horse or the mule as these animals are very loose in morality more than all other creatures which have no understanding for People of this sort do not try to understand this way it is written which have no understanding and in another place yet the dogs are greedy in soul they never have enough and they are shepherds that cannot understand Yeshua 5611 this means that just as they are greedy in their soul also here it reveals that they will prepare for themselves children who will be called greedy in their souls for what reason because they cannot understand six and they are shepherds he questions. Who are these shepherds and answers these are those who guide and lead people to Gehenom they never have enough just as the verse that says a leech namely Gehenom has two daughters crying give give Mishle 3015 because they say give give then they never have enough they all look to their own way everyone for his gain from his quarter Yeshua 5611 since they seek out Gehenom what caused all this it is because they did not sanctify themselves at mating as much as they should. How therefore it is written you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy the holy one blessed be he says from all nations I wanted only Israel to cling to me as it is written but you that did cleave of Hashem devarim 44 you not the other nations for this reason you shall be holy indeed section 2 a land of buzzing wings Rabbi Yitzhak says that when God created the world he wanted to reveal matters of depth from among concealed matters and so light came forth from darkness evil came forth from good judgment came from mercy all were intermingled and interdependent thus when the world is just judgment is tempered with mercy otherwise the world could not survive 7 you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy Vayikra 192 Rabbi Yitzhak commenced oh also a land of buzzing wings Yeshua 181 he questions just because it is a land of buzzing wings is that such a cause for alarm that the verse writes will land he answers as Rabbi Yitzhak explained at the time the Holy One blessed be he created the world and wanted to reveal matters of depth from among concealed matters and light from darkness these terms were intermingled for this reason from darkness came light and concealment departed and became known as the depth and this resulted from it so from good came evil from mercy came judgment all intermingled the good inclination with the evil one right and left Israel and other nations white and black each thing was dependent on the other eight we learned that Rabbi Yitzhak said on behalf of Rabbi Yehuda the whole world appears as if in one composition kept together with its own web meaning the quality of judgment and the quality of mercy being malchute and bina are linked and interwoven with one another and so when the world is judged it is judged with judgment tempered with mercy with malchute included in bina were it not so the world could not survive even one moment we established this matter as it is written for when your judgments let justice are on the earth namely mercy call justice the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness Yeshua 269 they were capable of receiving the judgment of righteousness being malchute due to its connection to the attribute of mercy 9 we learned at that time when judgment is suspended over the world and righteousness malchute is crowned with judgment many winged ones are stirred against the beings of harsh judgment so as to rule the world they spread their wings from one side then from the other to keep watch over the world then they raise their wings to spread and join in the harsh judgment and to fly across the earth to do evil then it is written will land of buzzing wings 9 be rabbi Yehuda said i see mankind insolent except for the truly righteous for this reason everything is in such a condition so to speak he who comes to purify is healthy who wishes to defile is as we established that you should be defiled by then Vayikra 1143 section 3 you shall be holy Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia say that the words of Torah are superior to all sacrifices and even one who has had a judgment decreed against him can have his penalty cancelled because of his study of Torah healing is found in the Torah and its function is to purify the unclean as the Torah itself is constantly in a state of purity there is also a promise that if one studies Torah one shall become holy Rabbi Yossi says that as men purify themselves below they are purified on high we read about the time when mating is appropriate the moment when one is consecrated Rabbi Abba also talks about when man is called one and the role of the Tefillin in creating this unity when a man and woman are clinging to one another in body and soul then God dwells in their unity and gives them a holy spirit for their child 10 Rabbi Yossi was going on his way when Rabbi Shia met him he said to him what the scholars established about that which is written concerning Eli and therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of the house of Eli shall not be purged with sacrifice or offering forever I Shmuel 314 meaning that it is not purged with sacrifice or offering but atonement comes through the words of Torah why it is because words of Torah are superior to all sacrifices as has been accepted it is written this is the Torah of the burnt offering of the meal offering and of the sin offering and of the guilt offering by cross 737 this indicates that the Torah is equal to all sacrifices in the world he replied this is surely so for even if a penalty of heaven is decreed against he who toils in Torah the penalty is cancelled because the study of the Torah is better for him than all sacrifices and offerings 11 come and behold man becomes pure solely through words of Torah for this reason words of Torah never receive defilement since the function of the Torah is to purify the unclean there is healing in the Torah as it is written it shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones Mishlei 38 there is purity in the Torah as it is written the fear to Hashem is clean enduring forever Tehillim 1910 what is meant by enduring forever it means that it remains constantly in the state of purity which is never removed from it 12 he said to him behold it says the fear of Hashem not the Torah he replied this is surely so that it refers to the Torah as Torah comes from it state of Bura and hence is called fear of Hashem he said to him you learned that idea from there from the verses the fear of Hashem is the beginning of wisdom Tehillim 11110 so we see that wisdom is
and the sanctity of the hidden supernal wisdom exceeds all others. He said Torah does not exist without wisdom, and wisdom does not exist without Torah. All is on one level, all is one. There is Torah in supernal wisdom, and it is there through it, and in it roots are planted on all sides. Fifteen, as they were going, they met a person riding on a horse at a place where the town trash and refuse is kept. As he departed there, he put out his hand to a branch of the tree to clean his hands, even though there was no reason to fear that he had touched the filth as he rode on a horse. Nonetheless, he was strict with himself about cleansing his hands since he found himself in a dirty environment. Rabbi Yossi said, This is what is written, You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy. Vayikra 1144 Man purifies himself below, and he is purified on high. This is the essence of the verse, You shall be holy, for I Hashem your Elohim am holy. 16 Rabbi Abba taught that this portion of Kedashim comprises the entire Torah and is sealed with the ring of truth. In this portion, there are new supernal secrets of Torah in the Ten Commandments and decrees penalties and heavenly commandments. When the friends reached this chapter, they were overjoyed. 17 Rabbi Abba said, What is the reason that the portion about incest and the portion of Kedashim are adjacent? And answers we learn that he who keeps away from incest is definitely produced in holiness since his parents sanctified themselves at Time of intercourse, and this is most certainly so. If he also sanctifies himself with the sanctity of his master through work on himself, this was commented upon by the friends. 18. When is the time for all men to consecrate in marital duties? Come and behold, he who wishes to consecrate himself with the grace of his master should mate only from midnight on or at midnight, as at that hour the Holy One, blessed be his EIR and is in the Garden of Eden, denoting Malchut, and the supernal sanctity is awakened. That is the moment to be consecrated. This is fine for all other people. Torah scholars familiar with the ways of Torah know that midnight is the hour to rise and toil in the Torah, join with the congregation of Israel, denoting Malchut, and praise the Holy Name, denoting Malchut, and the Holy King, denoting ZEIR and 19. Shabbat when there is universal goodwill, is the moment for mating for Torah scholars in order to find the grace of the Holy One, blessed be and the congregation. Of Israel denoting both Zeir and Pen and Malchut as we learned from the verse you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 they are called holy as it is written you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy and it is written and he shall be like a tree planted by streams of water that brings forth its fruit in its season Tehillim 1320 you shall be holy Rabbi Abba commenced and what one nation in the earth is like your people like Israel 2 Shmuel 723 command Behold the Holy One blessed be he did not want any of the nations of the world except Israel alone he made them a singular nation in the world he called them one nation like his name he crowned them with numerous adornments numerous precepts to be adorned and he gave them the head and hand tefillin to adorn them just as is above the head tefillin are of Zeir and Pen the hand tefillin are are Malchut this was so that there would be a consistent perfection in everything above and Below 21 at that time when man adorns himself with them and sanctifies himself with them namely Tefillin he becomes complete and is called one because he is not called one until he is perfect one who is defective is not called one the Holy One blessed be he is therefore called one in his total perfection the perfection of the patriarchs Jesus Bura and Tiferet and the perfection of the congregation of Israel denoting Malchut for this Israel below is called one as when a man dons Tefillin and is enveloped with the cover according to the commandment namely the talit then he is adorned with the holy adornment similar to that on high and is thus called one twenty two because of this let man come and strive for the one the Holy One blessed be he who is one deals with one namely Israel for the king deals only with what is befitting him for this reason it is written but he is unchangeable in one and who can turn him two thousand three hundred and thirteen since the Holy One blessed be he abides and dwells only in one he asks it says he is in one should it not read one he answers yet the explanation is as one established in supernal sanctity to be one meaning in Israel then he hovers in one and not in any place else meaning in another nation 23 when is a person called one at the time when there is male and female and he sanctifies himself with supernal holiness and strives to be saintly come and behold when a person is in one union male and female and aims to sanctify himself properly then he is perfect and is considered one without defect 24 for this reason man needs to bring joy to his wife at that time to prepare her with him with one desire both should ready themselves to that matter and when both are together then everything is one in body and soul and soul they are one to cling to each other in one wish in body they are one as we learn that a man who does not marry is like a half body he is a half body and is made as a half body when they join Male and female they become one complete body thus they are one soul one body and man is in one and the Holy One blessed be he dwells in the one and deposits a Holy Spirit in that one namely in that which is born from them. 25 these are called children of the Holy One blessed be he as we learned above and for this reason you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy fortunate are Israel for not placing this thing elsewhere meaning they sought no reward for their holiness but only to cling to him as is written for I Hashem your Elohim am holy meaning that his children are to cling to him only and to no other hence you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy section 4 you shall revere every man his mother and his father Rabbi Yossi says that whoever fears their mother and father observes the Shabbat he wonders why the mother is mentioned first and Rabbi Shimon explains that the mother does not have the power to instill fear that the father does therefore she is mentioned first Rabbi Yehuda says that just as heaven and earth were created simultaneously both parents are equal in fear and honor Rabbi Shimon tells us about the sanctification below during mating and the supernal mating above 26 you shall fear every man his mother and his father Vayikra 193 this chapter contains general principles of the whole Torah if this is so we need to examine why one's fear of father and mother is adjacent to my Shabbat Ibn and answers Rabbi Yossi said that it is actually all the same he who has fear of this namely his father and mother observes the Shabbat 27 you shall revere every man his mother he questions why does mother precede father as it says you shall revere every man his mother and his father what is the reason and answers as we explained his mother is powerless to instill fear like his father therefore the verse leads with her fear first 28 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written before you shall be holy of it too meaning that a man needs to sanctify together with his wife whose praise for the sanctity is considered paramount we say it is a woman's because she is not as knowledgeable in Torah and sanctity as the man hence it starts with mother saying you shall revere every man his mother and his father 29 Rabbi Yehuda said you shall revere every man his mother and his father placing the mother before the father this is similar to the verse in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heaven Bereshit 24 in another place heaven precedes earth the purpose is to show that both heaven and earth were created simultaneously this is also the case here he leads mother before father and elsewhere he leads father before mother to show that because both strove for him together both are equal in fear and honor 38 and keep my Shabbat Ovei 193 indicates two Shabbat the day of Shabbat denoting Zeir and Shabbat denoting Malchut both are equal and their weight is the same therefore the verse wrote them as one as is written you shall keep the Shabbat therefore for it is holy to you Shema 3114 and remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy Shema 208 one place writes keep and one place remember yet one verse deals with the father denoting Zeir and indicated through remembering the other verses from the mother denoting Malchut indicated by keeping 30 b it is written here you shall revere every man his mother and his father and keep my Shabbat oh, it is written elsewhere you shall keep my Shabbat oh, and revere my sanctuary Vayikra 262 what is meant by my sanctuary it is according to the literal meaning the temple another way to explain my sanctuary is that it refers to those who sanctify themselves at that time similarly and begin at my sanctuary Yeshua 96 which has been explained do not read it at my sanctuary but rather at my sanctified and just as their its explanation is my Sanctified ones here also in the verse and revere my sanctuary it's meaning I yes my sanctified ones meaning the people who sanctify themselves who are the father and mother 31 you shall revere every man his mother and his father Rabbi Shimon said it is written but you that did cleave to Hashem to Barim 44 fortunate are Israel that cling to the Holy One blessed be he because they cling to him everything clings together one with the other 32 come and behold when man
Unix that keep my Shabbat Oyashea 564 Who are these Unix? These are the scholars that act like Unix all other days in order to toil in the Torah they wait from Shabbat to Shabbat This is the essence of the writing that keep my Shabbat oh, the term keep means as it says but his father kept the matter in mind Bereshit 3711 meaning to wait for this reason it is written and keep my Shabbat oh, you shall revere every man his mother and his father refers to the father and mother of the body and keep my Shabbat oh, refers to the father and mother of the soul this amounts to two Shabbat oh, Zeir and Fin and Malchut it all comes together one with the other fortunate is a lot of Israel the number 32 is emphasized in the section pertaining to the number of times that Elohim is written in the acts of creation and the numerical value of Kabbat honor and the 32 paths of wisdom Rabbi Shimon speaks to the faithful shepherd Moses and tells him to be strong because God will appoint him king on high and below the sages of Mishnah have said that man's father and mother are Zer and Pen and the congregation of Israel Malchut the Torah is the honor of the father it is for Israel to do the commandments of Abba and I am a Chakma and Bina that are the positive precepts we hear about the difference between those who hear the precepts direct from God and those who hear them from an intermediary and then obey the former are children of God and the latter are servants of God Raya. Mahim of the faithful shepherd 34 you shall revere every man his mother and his father and keep my Shabbat oh, these precepts are equal to each other since respect for parents is equivalent to the honor for Shabbat with regard to his father it first talks of honor as the verse said if then I am the father where is my honor have kevadai and if I am a master where is my fear Malachi 16 the word kevadai numerically equals 42 and consists of the 10 sayings and 32 times Elohim written in it Acts of Creation 35 In every place the wise shall inherit honor Mishlei 335 The sages explain that this honor refers to nothing but the Torah denoting Zeir and called Torah as the 32 expressions of Elohim in the Torah are his honor the word Kabbalah honor or glory numerically equals 32 the secret of wisdom as earlier mentioned these wise men of the Torah who are the wise in Chakma inherit this honor the Mokin of 32 Elohim this is not so for the fools about whom it is written but fools shall get shame but how do we know that someone ignorant in Torah is called a fool as it is written nor does a fool understand this Tehillim 927 the word this refers to Torah as it is written and this is the Torah which Moses said to Barim 444 36 the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon said to the faithful shepherd faithful shepherd because you are weak I have begun this portion with these commandments in order to be somewhat of a support to you be strong as the Encampments of the yeshiva come to you with the following commandment the precept of instituting a king upon you on high the holy one blessed be he will appoint you king on high and below in his form since upon the sages in the yeshiva rests the supernal sheshen abana and also the lower malchut the two hays in the name yud hey and the holy one blessed be he who is above is the king in the center of the two hays held with the most high and that below with bana and malchut so you will be in his form his sunrise with the glory of the king 37 the faithful shepherd rose raised his hands upwards to keter and said may it be your will the cause of all causes who rises from cause to cause so there is no cause above you you are above any cause may it be your will to give me strength to do your will within your levels being abba and i am a meaning chakma and bana and i am their son since the faithful shepherd is moses referring to that being the offspring of chakma and Bina with your unity the two are one you have equated the fear of Abba and Ima to the fear of you and as much as you are in the middle as Chakma and Bina are right and left with Keter above them in the middle they are one not two without any sharing even though the Abba and Ima are one through your partnership you are one without any other participant for this it is written about you and there is no Elohim with me Devarim 3239 38 give me strength to stir myself first to honor you and then afterwards in honor of my father and mother in heaven as there is Eir and Ben and Malchut regarding whom the verse has been explained he who robs his father or his mother and says it is no transgression he is a companion of a destroyer Mishlei 2824 the sages of the mission have established that his father is none other than the Holy One blessed be his Eir and Ben and his mother is none other than the congregation of Israel being Malchut your honor refers to Abba namely Chakma. Included in his tents fire from below upward as Chakma does not glow from below upward and both of them Chakma and Bina are the throne and bench beneath you for your glory 39 so they said and proclaimed that the junior respect the senior above him Abba being Chakma since there is only one father for us all may serve under you and you shall be a supernal crown over his head there is no crown above you nor any other deity I am a namely Bina needs to serve Abba as she is beneath him and is his throne beneath him 40 and said Bereshit one Abba appears in every saying as many as 32 times Elohim where it said and it was so and she I am a carried out what he said at once because she did his commandments without any delay in the 32 paths of Chakma illuminating the 32 Elohim and Bina with them were created everything in the acts of creation she is called glory as the word numerically equals 32 as it is written and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory Tehillim 299 also. Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashiskel 312 also where is the place of his glory to adorn him all these refer to by the call glory 41 the Aramaic translation of the honor of his father is Yakra the Torah of Hashem is perfect Tehillim 198 about which is written she is more precious heavy than rubies Mishlei 315 hence the Torah being the secret of Zeir and called precious is the honor of the father Israel called children are comprised of son and daughter from the aspect of Tiferet and Malchut it is for the son and daughter the precious ones of the father and mother being Chakma and Bina to do the command of Abba and the commandments of Abba and Ima are the positive precepts the sages of the mission have established the concept of being commanded and keeping it hence will we do and obey Shema 247 since that is the honor of Abba and Ima they command the son to do and he does at once without any delay 42 O supernal cause of all Causes Keter I wish to strive for your honor to establish the attributes of Abba and I am a being Chakma and Bina for your honor's sake help me to arrange everything properly you will arrange for me and for all masters of the Yeshiva above and below and the camps on high and the low angels will be arranged and ready for your honor Keter and for the honor of Abba and I am a Chakma and Bina to serve as a stool under his feet to do the bidding of Abba and I am a in all his precepts and to fear him in all the negative precepts 43 this is the meaning of you shall revere every man his mother and his father adjacent to and keep my Shabbat and in another verse and keep my commandments vi 263 from the standpoint of the positive precepts such as honor the father precedes mother that is yet hey indicating Abba first as positive precepts are from Abba's aspect not from the side of the negative precepts representing fear mother precedes father this points to hey yet where I am a hey. Precedes Abba who is Yud. this is the essence of it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing Mishlei 252 for those who do not strive for this honor namely the precepts this thing is to be concealed from them 44 about them is said but fools shall get shame Mishlei 335 this refers to the unlearned for they do not work for the glory of Torah how can they say our father who is in heaven hear our voice have pity and compassion upon us and accept our prayer the holy one blessed be he replies to them if then I am the father where is my honor Malachi 16 the meaning I ask where are your efforts on behalf of Torah and observance of my precepts for if someone does not know the precepts of his master how can he worship him 45 the exception is one who hears from the scholars and performs even though he does not understand on his own this is like the verse will we do and obey meaning he listens to the scholars and performs nonetheless there is a difference for the person that does not receive it from his master but only from his messenger what is the difference between one and the other it is written that Moses received the Torah from Sinai and later passed it to Joshua I the faithful shepherd received and transmitted to them all so for he who receives from someone else it is similar to when the moon and stars receive their light from the sun and with this reception they are fulfilled in the case of one who receives it is possible that this bounty may depart from him as we see regarding the sun and moon that their light departs at night since the sun illuminates only by day and the moon only at night 46 you may say that the light of the moon is from the sun even though its light is gathered it glows by the moon and stars hence the sun shines also at night and answers from another standpoint we see at an eclipse of the moon and sun that their light has departed and they remain like
serve the sages as to obey them regarding precepts to fulfill will we do and obey he sins and transgresses the negative precepts he is considered and is likened to the idolatrous nations of the world the children of Samael and the serpent of whom it says but fools shall get shame Mishlei 335 as they refuse to receive the Torah he who does not possess Torah lacks any honor as it says about them the wise shall inherit honor if it's section 5 a son honors his Father, we hear about how a disobedient son can be forced to obey his parents and what the punishment is if he does not the mixture of evil inside a son can cause him to disobey just as the children of Israel disobeyed God the good servant or son stems from Metatron and the bad from Samael but in the world of Atzalot there is no division and no sin can come through the soul that is drawn from there 49 with all the heads of the Yeshiva not all honor is the same as son honors his father and a servant his master Malachi 16 a son honors without the object of receiving reward but nonetheless he is commanded to honor father and mother if he does not want to perform this his parents can punish him until he unwillingly agrees if he is a grown son the court of justice can force him if he does not want to it is written about him this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice to bar him 2120 he is then sentenced to stoning but in the case of a servant who serves Primarily to receive reward if he does not comply with the orders of his master, his master can dismiss him from his house and take someone else. He cannot do so with his son either. He complies and performs his command or he puts him to death. 50 The holy luminary, namely Rabbi Shimon, said to him what caused the son not to perform his command, even though he is his son, the faithful shepherd replied, Surely the mixture of evil within him, the secret caused Israel to sin before their father in heaven. This is the secret of but were mingled among the nations. Tehillim 10635 This caused the slaying of Israel and the destruction of the temple. For this reason, we do not accept converts in the days of the Messiah, but so Hashem alone did lead him, and there was no strange with him. Devarim 31 As Israel stems from the tree of life, and there is a good and bad servant from the part of Metatron stems the good servant, since he is a loyal servant to his master, the bad servant stems. From Samael, however, he who stems from the tree of life has part in the world to come. He is a son from the aspect of the son of Yudhay, denoting Zeir and since Banu Yudhay he consists of the letters of son had been of Yudhay, and he inherits Malchud, which is Hay of Yudhay. Vav Hay, how does he inherit her by performing the precepts of Abba and Iama? He thus inherits her for Malchud is the command of the king about it. It says, Why are you trespassing the king's commandment? Esther 33. The commandment and the king's command affect the positive and the negative precepts. 52. The precept is from the Torah, which is Tiferet. Here there is no division between the Torah and the precepts, since the Torah is general and her precepts are her particulars. Thus they are one. The Holy One, blessed be he, his truth. His Torah is a Torah of truth. He is his Torah and his precepts, since they are one, just as Bina is the Torah and the precept of Chakma, since the supernal Torah and precept are the Secret of Chakma and Bina which are one and never part, there is the Torah of Briah meaning Zeir and Bina of the world of Briah Chakma Briah and Bina of Briah and so in all the attributes there is Chakma and Bina Torah and precept here in the world of Briah it is possible that the sun be in this Torah without the precepts or the precepts without the Torah in separation from here from the aspect of the world of Briah is drawn the stubborn and rebellious sun, since in the world of Briah there are already clipot in the secret of the verse Elohim has made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 but in the world of Atzalot there is no division thus no sin can come through the soul that is drawn from there there is in IT no penalty no reward no death from there because there are no clipot there at all in the secret of the verse nor shall evil dwell with you Tehillim 5553 therefore in Atzalot the Torah is the tree of life conceiving it to be the reward of it. World to come, namely, Bina. This tree is called the tree of life, called the world to come. From the aspect of Bina, no reward pertains to it because the sun from there does not toil in Torah in order to receive reward, not in deed, speech, or in thought. 54 The holy luminary approached to kiss his hands. He said, Surely you are a son from there, from the world of Atzalot, in the form of its firstborn son, being Tiferet for the son of the supernal Abba and Iama. His Atzalot never ceases, no other son preceded you, not in thought, speech, nor deed. The faithful shepherd said, You and the friends and the heads of the Yeshiva that are present with me are all without any interruption or mixture from the other side, namely, of the aspect of the world of Atzalot. They kiss one another intermingled in brotherhood and with section 6. A firstborn son, Rabbi Shimon, says that the brothers of the firstborn son are obligated to honor him because he is the eldest he talks about. Being the child of God in the level of all three worlds, Briah Yitzirah and Asiyah 55 Rabbi Shimon commenced saying despite all this being the firstborn son alluding to the faithful shepherd all his brothers are obligated to honor him as it is written honor your father Shema 2012 and the sages have established that the particle et litay includes your older brother whom you need to honor in every aspect it is explained in the Torah regarding you for that had Bishay Gambir Sheet 63. Namely Abel indicates that Moses was the soul of Abel Adam had no son before him as Cain is from the aspect of the serpent and Abel from the aspect of Adam the sages established that Bishagam is Moses since Bishagam has the same numerical value as Moses the son to the king in every respect you are the firstborn from the aspect of the tree of life of good and evil you are good as the verses state and Elohim saw the light that it was good Bishay 14 and when she saw that he was a goodly. Child Shema 22 This means the angel Metatron is called the tree of life of good and evil and Moses is the good aspect thereof 56 and from there the Holy One blessed be he called you faithful servant since servant comes from the aspect of Metatron later you were promoted to be king as the verse states and he was a king in Yeshur and Devarim 335 and you were a member of the most high household you were a king from the aspect of Malchud of Bria, a member of the household from the aspect of Bana Bria. now you are a king from the aspect of the tree of Malchud of Atzalot a member of the household from the aspect of Yehei Tiferet of Atzalot fortunate is your lot what brought this about for you your studious involvement in Torah and the precept to unify the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechen to bring the king to his post over his host on high and on Yisrael below 57 because of this they all inherit from him souls of Atzalot and are thus called his Children of the name Yudhei Bavhei of Atzalot, where there exists no division or mutilation. At first, it is mentioned about them that they are children of the Holy One. Blessed be he and his Shechinah from the aspect of Yudhei Bavhei of the world of Briah, as it is written concerning him. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. I have made him. Yeshua 437, meaning that he created him from the aspect of Yudhei Bavhei of Briah, formed him from Yitzirah, and also made him from the aspect of Asiyah. Now they have become children of Yudhei Bavhei of Atzalot. Section 7. Then you may appoint a king over you. Rabbi Shimon continues speaking to Moses, the faithful shepherd, talking about Moses' elevation in the levels of kingship. He says that Moses will be leader of Israel and bind them all into one knot with God, so that they may all bless and sanctify him. 58. With you was the precept that was given to. Israel to appoint a king over them fulfilled as the verse says then you may appoint a king over you Devarim 1715 first it was fulfilled in relation to you and he was a king in Yeshur and Devarim 335 as he was the first king of Israel everyone followed you like limbs acting all with the strength of the movement of the soul that spreads into each limb it is due to a supernal crown that you will be adorned within which is the cause of all causes it is keter over all hidden and concealed in its innermost being from it it spreads to all the sphira and organizes them so that Jesus should be prominent judgment should be small and mercy intermediate he guides them according to his will shines within them binds them and unifies them 59 similarly you shall be leader of Israel with all its good traits of keter and arrange each and everyone properly the oldest according to his seniority the youngest according to his youth and the intermediate according to his level you will bind them into one not to their father in heaven that they may all in clear language bless the holy one bless be he sanctify him and unify him according to your level your thoughts your atzala and there should be fulfilled with you and i will take of the spirit which is upon you and will put it upon them imidbar 1117 arise awaken yourself to the commandment of erasing the seed of amalek 60 you shall revere
I being in the state of the world of Briya Abba and Ima are present namely Zeir Anpin and Malchut and the supernal king namely Bana participated with them and sent the spirit of life and he was created similarly three partners all exist above and below therefore man needs to fear the Holy One blessed be he his father and his mother 62 it is recorded in the secrets of the Torah that Adam had nothing from this world meaning from the state of Malchut of the quality of judgment the righteous being the Yizid of Zeir Anpin had his contact with the female meaning with Malchut that was clothing Bana from this contact came one body whose illumination was more than all the angels and messenger from above when that one body was created the supernal king Bana sent with this righteous denoting Yizid of Zeir Anpin 22 letters Bana joined with them and then he came into the world 63 when he Adam came into the world the sun and moon saw him and their light was dim the heel of the foot of Adam darkened their life for what reason because he is derived from the doings of the supernal sun and moon namely Zeir Anpin and Malchut however when he sinned he became dark and reduced himself and needed another body with skin and flesh as it is written for the man also and for his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skins and clothed them Vershi 321 the like of that contact that the righteous had with the female leading to the birth of Adam as mentioned there never was before this nor afterwards for the craftsman has not yet come out to refine 64 when he not came the holy one blessed be he took him from the earth cleansed him from the refuse and the silver from the tin residue and so with all the righteous in the land afterwards that place was corrected meaning Malchut where Malchut of the quality of judgment was concealed and was no longer seen and were fashioned from the coupling of Zeir Anpin and Malchut spirits and souls and the body below on earth Hence as a result of the participation of above and below man comes into the world and it is incumbent upon him to fear these participants and revere them as we learned and of our AI Mehem Rabbi Shimon says that the precepts men perform and also their transgressions ascend and stand before God and testify for or against him if the man repents of any transgressions God removes his sin 65 turn not to idols nor make to yourselves molten Elohim Vayikra 194 Rabbi Shia commence look not to the stubbornness of this people Devarim 927 look not he questions who can tell the king look not seeing that it is written for his eyes are upon the ways of Manio 3421 and can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him says Hashem Yermeo 2324 the Holy One blessed be he watches everything looks at all deeds and brings judgment for all whether good or bad as it is written for the Elohim shall bring every work into justice with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Kahil at 1214 yet Moses says look not 66 he answers see how much a person needs to be cautious of sins in order not to transgress before the holy king come and behold when one performs a precept this precept ascends and then stands before the holy one blessed be he and says I belong to so and so who made me the holy one blessed be he places it before him and watches over it daily in order to benefit the person on its behalf if a man transgresses with a matter of Torah that transgression appears before him and says I am a product of the one who made me the holy one blessed be he appoints it and it remains there so that he may see it in order to punish him this is the essence of the verse and when Hashem saw it he abhorred them because of the provocation of his sons and daughters Devarim 3219 what is meant by saw it he means the transgression standing before him 67 he repents then it is written Hashem also has commuted your sinew shall not die to Shmuel 1213 meaning that he removed from before him that sin in order not to look at it and to benefit him therefore it is written look not to the stubbornness of this people nor to their wickedness nor to their sin meaning do not look at them Rabbi Yossi said also from here is derived this idea as it is written yet the stain of your iniquity is before me Yermea 222 section 9 a woman whom you did give to be with me Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon talk about the creation of Eve and how she was separated from the attachment that she had to Adam in this way she became his helpmate 68 Rabbi Yossi the younger entered before Rabbi Shimon one day and found him sitting and reading the verse and the man said the woman whom you did give to be with me she gave me of the tree and I did eat Bear she 312 this year means that Adam and Eve were created together stuck one to the other in one body as it says did give to be with me and not you gave to me he replied to him if so what of the verse I am the woman that stood by you here I Shmuel 126 it is not written that stood before you he said to him if the verse read given with you then I would say it resembles the other verse that says whom you did give to be with me however as it reads to then the meaning is only standing alone but not attached to him 69 he replied behold it is written and Hashem Elohim said it is not good that the man should be alone I will make him a help to match before him Bershi 218 hence his wife was created alone she was before him not attached to him in one body he answers I will make him meaning now I will make her before him but prior to this they were created attached in one body he said to him so it was surely that Adam was alone he had no help in a female since she was attached by the rib as explained and the meaning of I will make him a help means that it is already so as it is not written I will Create a help which I ask because it is written male and female he created them Bershi 52, meaning that since the time of creation they were already a male and female but it says I will make what shall I make meaning I will fix meaning a holy one blessed be he took her from his ribs in order to make this corrective change brought her before him and then Adam united with his wife and she was his helpmate section 10 it is forbidden for a man to look at a woman's beauty Rabbi Shimon says that the souls of Adam and Eve came from such a high place that no one could look at their great light and beauty only after they sinned was Adam even able to look at Eve and recognize her for the purpose of mating we learn that men should not look at women lest they be tempted and acquire bad thoughts that will come to them in the night it is worse still if a man is mating with his wife and has thoughts about another woman as this results in the birth of impure Children 70 we learned that the beauty of Adam came from the glow of the supernal not of the brightness that shines being the secret of the glow of Abba since he had a neshama of the neshama of Abba of Atzala, the beauty of Eve was such that no creature could look at her since her neshama of neshama of Ima of Atzala, even Adam did not look at her until the time they sent and their beauty was removed only then could Adam look at her and recognize her for the purpose of mating this is the essence of the verse and Adam knew his wife again Bershi 425 he knew her in everything he knew her through mating that is new and that he recognized her and saw her 71 we learned that is it prohibited for a man to look at the beauty of a woman to prevent him from acquiring bad thoughts and being torn into another thing meaning that a drop of semen will be torn from him in vain so did Rabbi Shimon behave when he came to the city the friends followed him and when he saw beautiful Women he lowered his eyes and told the friends not to look 72 whoever look at the beauty of women during the day will have those thoughts coming to him at night when those evil thoughts come upon him at night he transgresses because nor make to yourselves molten Elohim for the clipot that nurture from this are called molten Elohim furthermore if he is mating with his wife when he has these evil thoughts the children born are called molten Elohim Leviticus 194 therefore it is written turn not to idols nor make to yourselves molten Elohim Rabbi Abba said it is prohibited for a person to look at idols and women of the nations to derive any benefit from them or to seek a cure from them as it is forbidden to look at a forbidden place section 11 turn away your eyes from me Rabbi Shimon tells Rabbi Abba about another David a supernal David who brings mercy from God to the world his beauty illuminates all the worlds we then learn about another garden of Eden a supernal garden that exists for God wherein his love is found lastly Rabbi Shimon talks about another land a supernal land of Israel situated beneath the level of Jacob and which God bequeathed to Israel it is called land of life 73 Rabbi Abba commands O turn to me and have mercy upon me give your strength to your servant Tehillim 8616 O turn to me and have mercy upon me he questions did the Holy One blessed be he have any other person in the world as beautiful as David so that he needed to say O turn to me and have mercy upon me and answer such we learned that the Holy One blessed be he has another David namely Malchut named David appointed over numerous supernal troops and camps when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to show mercy upon the earth he looks to this David and shines his radiance upon him he in turn illuminates the worlds and extends mercy to the world 74 the beauty of this David illuminates all worlds his head ahead of gold is Embroidered with seven ornaments of seven types of gold as we have already established the affection of the Holy One blessed be he is
To him David said, O turn to me and have mercy upon me. 75 similar to this and said, See the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which Hashem has blessed. Beersheet 2727 We understand from here that with Jacob there entered the garden of Eden which is a field of holy apple trees. He questions how could the garden of Eden enter with him when the garden is so much greater in width and length. Consider how many holy supernal abodes levels upon levels dwellings upon dwellings. There are there 76 and answers but another supernal holy garden namely Malchut exists for the holy one blessed be he has in that garden is found his love he clings to it and it is reserved solely for the holy one blessed be he where he enters this he apportions in order to be always with the righteous and all the more so with Jacob the holy one blessed be he prepared it for him to enter with him to help him 77 in the same manner I am Hashem the Elohim of your father Abraham and it. Elohim of Isaac the land Beersheet 2813 we learned that the entire land of Israel converged beneath him and so he said to him the land on which you lie to you will I give it a bit and he questions the land of Israel is 400 parasangs by 400 parasangs how could it have been uprooted from its place and come beneath him but there is another supernal land which the holy one blessed be he has called the land of Israel namely Malchut situated beneath the level of Jacob who is Above it for Jacob is the chariot of Zeir and Pen and Malchut is beneath Zeir and Pen the Holy One blessed be he bequeathed it to Israel due to their love to live with them and to lead them and shield them from all it is called land of life section 12 it is forbidden to man to look at a place which the Holy One blessed be he loathes Rabbi Shimon tells us that it is forbidden for man to look at a place that God loves and at a place that he hates it is forbidden to look at a rainbow because it reflects a supernal image and to look at the sign of the covenant because it alludes to the righteous of the world and to look at the fingers of the priests when they spread their hands because the glory of the supernal king rests there Israel are warned not to turn to idols nor to transgress the rest of the Ten Commandments Rabbi Shimon tells Rabbi Shia that when Israel stood at Mount Sinai they were in one united desire for God 78 come and behold it is forbidden to man to look at a place that the Holy One blessed be he loathes and his soul is far from it now if it is prohibited to look at what the Holy One blessed be he loves then that which is far from him is even more forbidden come and behold it is forbidden to man to look at a rainbow as it reflects a supernal image since Malchut has the three colors of the rainbow being the secret of her three columns also it is forbidden to man to look at his member of the sign of the covenant as it hints about the righteous of the world and also it is forbidden to look at the fingers of the priests when they spread their hands since there rests the glory of the supernal king so if in a supernal holy place is it forbidden to look then in a distant unclean place it certainly is prohibited to look for this reason turn not to idols Vayikra 194 Rabbi Yitzhak said if looking at them is prohibited then to worship them or make them is all the more so 79 for this reason turn not to idols hear it comes to warn Israel as it did in the beginning in the Ten Commandments for turn not to idols corresponds to you shall have no other Elohim beside me Shema 203 the words nor make to yourselves molten Elohim correspond to you shall not make for yourself any carved idol of it I am Hashem your Elohim corresponds to I Hashem your Elohim you shall revere every man his mother and his father corresponds to honor your father and your mother the words and keep my Shabbat oh, correspond to remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy and you shall not swear by my name falsely corresponds to you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain you shall not steal corresponds to you shall not steal neither deal falsely neither lie one to another corresponds to you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor the adulterer and adulteress shall surely be put to death Vayikra 2010 corresponds to you shall not commit adultery neither shall you stand aside when mischief lit blood befalls your neighbor corresponds to you shall not murder this has already been established hence this portion contains the whole of the Torah 80 Rabbi Shia said at first in the Ten Commandments it is written I am Hashem your Elohim remember the Shabbat day you shall not take the name you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal all are written in the singular but your IT is written I am Hashem your Elohim you shall revere every man his mother and his father and keep my Shabbat oh, turn not to idols all are written in the plural form and he answers come and behold since the first day Israel has been on the earth they were not in such unity in heart and desire before the Holy One blessed be he is on the day they stood at Mount Sinai therefore everything there is written in the singular afterwards it is written in the plural because they lack some with that desire meaning one united desire Section 13 I am Hashem your Elohim from the land of Egypt Rabbi Lazar wonders why it seems that the title verse is saying there was no Elohim before Israel were in Egypt and Rabbi Shimon explains that Israel only knew the glory of God from the time they were in Egypt from that time they saw many miracles and wonders and his glory was exposed to them when he parted the C81 Rabbi Lazar was going to visit Rabbi Yussi son of Shimon the son of Lekunya his father-in-law with him. Where Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi when they arrived at a field they sat beneath the tree Rabbi Lazar commenced to say each should speak about a passage in the Torah Rabbi Lazar began I am Hashem your Elohim from the land of Egypt and you know no Elohim but me Hashia 134 it is not written as in another place who have brought you out of the land of Egypt Shema 202 but I am Hashem your Elohim from the land of Egypt he questions they had a king only since the time in Egypt and not before is it. Not written, then Jacob said to his household, Put away the strange Elohim that are among you, and let us arise and go up to Bethel. Beersheet 352 to 3. Yet you say that it was only since the time of Egypt 82, and he answers, From the day Israel were in the world, the glory for the Holy One, blessed be he was never known except in the land of Egypt. When they found themselves in harsh bondage, they cried to him and did not change from their accustomed practice. There were our ancestors tested as gold, taken from the pipe in the smelting pot. Furthermore, daily they would see numerous sorcerers, many wicked kinds trying to mislead people, but they did not turn right or left from their path, even as they understood little about the glory of the Holy One, blessed be he, but were following the customs of their fathers. 83 afterwards, they saw numerous miracles, many mighty deeds, and the Holy One, blessed be he, took them for his service, since all saw numerous miracles and wonders before their eyes and all these signs and mighty deeds he said, I am Hashem your Elohim from the land of Egypt, for there his glory was exposed, he was seen by them by the sea, they saw the brilliance of his supernal splendor face to face, thus you should not say now that another deity spoke with us, but I am he you saw me in Egypt, I am he who slew your enemies in the land of Egypt, I am he who performed all ten plagues in Egypt, for this reason you know no Elohim but me, you will not say that it was another, but it is. I who am in everything, section 14, the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with you all night, we learn that if someone helped the poor God will extend his life when his time comes to die, if on the other hand someone takes the wages of the poor God will shorten his days and nor will his soul ascend. 84 Rabbi Lazar continued, you shall not defraud your neighbor nor rob him, the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with you all night until the morning. Vayikra 1913 he questions why the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with you all night and answers this is understood from another verse at his day you shall give him his hire neither shall the sun go down upon it for he is poor and sets his heart upon you Devarim 2415 the words neither shall the sun go down upon it mean be warned not to be gathered from this world because of him before it is your time to be gathered as the verse says before the Sindarkand Kahila 12 to this verse hints at the demise of man from here I learned another thing that in the case of he who satisfies the poor man's soul even when the time comes for his demise the holy one blessed be he satisfies his soul and lengthens his life 85 the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with you all night come and behold taking the wage of the poor is tantamount to taking his life and the life of his household he shortens his life and the holy one blessed be he will shorten his days and Lessen his life from that world for all the breaths that emitted from the mouth of the poor man that day will ascend before the Holy One blessed be he and stand before him later his soul will ascend and that of his family maintained with the breath of his mouth meaning that they will demand justice before the Holy One blessed be he then even if from before there was decreed for this person many years and much good all will be rooted out and taken away from him 86 in addition to this his soul will not ascend this is what Rabbi Abba said merciful one
the seven supernal days called Chisit, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit, and Malchut, if he did not give him his sole meaning his wage on that day, it is tantamount to causing a defect to that supernal day. For this reason, at his day you shall give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it. The words shall not abide with you all night refers to the penalty, since at night his soul will not ascend above, but the soul of the poor man and his household will ascend, as we said. Section 15 Nor put a stumbling block before the blind. We are told that the title verse is referring to someone who curses a person behind their back that evil speech ascends and prosecutes the speaker everywhere that people speak ascends and has a consequence. Also, one must not cause another to sin. Anyone who walks in the righteous path of Torah earns a share in the world to come since the words of Torah that he speaks ascend very high and are taken higher and higher. We learned it. Consequences for one who does not study the Torah in a pure way and of someone who wants to learn Torah but cannot find a good teacher. 89 After him, Rabashi recited the verse, You shall not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Vayikra 1914 This verse has a literal meaning, yet we learned some other supernal matters connected one to the other from this whole portion. Every branch below shows it has a root on high come and behold one who curses another who stands before. Him and shames him, it is considered as if he shed his blood. We established that this verse is speaking of the time the other one is not before him, and he curses him as speech ascends and prosecutes him. 90 There is not a word that emits from man that has no sound that sound ascends. Numerous destructive angels are joined with the sound until it ascends and awakens the place of the great abyss, the seat of the clipot, as we explained, many of them are roused against this person to punish him. Woe to one that emits harmful speech from his mouth that we established 91, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Literally, we explain this to mean one who causes another to sin so too when one strikes his grown son also, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, meaning one who has not yet reached the level to render Halashik decisions, yet teaches it as it is written, for she has cast down many wounded and many strong men have been slain by her Mishlay 726. This person. Transgressed against nor put a stumbling block before the blind because he caused the other to stumble on an obstacle with his rendering the law before the world to come. 92 We learned that one who walks in the righteous path of Torah and toils in Torah properly earns for himself a permanent good share in the world to come since the word of Torah emanating from his mouth flies in the world and ascends very high. Many holy angels on high join with this word and it rises in the straightway. Adorned with a holy crown and it washes itself in the river of the world to come by that flows and exits from Eden denoting Chakma and is accepted by it and is drawn within the supernal tree namely Zeir Anpin takes pleasure from around that river, meaning that it causes Zeir Anpin to receive the illumination of the river from by then the supernal light exits and it adorns that person all that day as we learned 93 when he who toils in Torah does not do so in a pure or righteous way. That word rises and turns off the path nothing joins it all push it out and it flies around the world without finding a haven who caused this that person who turned off from a straight path as it is written nor put a stumbling block before the blind meaning do not place an obstacle before words of Torah that emanate from his mouth for this reason it is written but shall fear your Elohim I am Hashem Leviticus 194 94 and there is a situation of one who has a yearning to toil in Torah but cannot find someone to teach him yet with his love of Torah he speaks of it and stammers with it as he does not know better each word ascends and the Holy One blessed be he rejoices with that word receives it plants it around that stream denoting Bina and from these are made large trees meaning great lights called the willows of the streams this is the meaning of the verse and be ravished always with her love Mishlei 519 and King David said teach me the way Hashem I Will walk in your truth. Tehillim 8611 and, and lead me in an even path because of my enemies. Tehillim 2711. Fortunate are those who know the ways of Torah and toil in it in a straight path for they plant trees of life above, meaning they draw Mokin to Zeir and been called the tree of life a healing to the soul. For this reason it is written the Torah of truth was in his mouth. Malachi 26. He questions is there an untruthful Torah and answers yes like we said if someone who knows not teaches. Halashik instructions this is untruthful one who learns from him learns something untruthful of this it is written the Torah of truth was in his mouth. 96. With all this one needs to learn Torah from all people even from one who does not know since through this he will be aroused in Torah and come to learn from someone who does know later it will turn out that he walked in Torah in a true way come and behold a person should toil in Torah and precepts even if not for its own sake for. Studying not for its own sake will lead to studying for its own sake. Section 16 In righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. This passage speaks about mercy and judgment and justice. When righteousness is triggered, there is no mercy in it. But when justice is triggered, there is mercy. Everyone shall be treated equally. We are told that God is found in the place of justice. God judges below as he does above with righteousness and justice. 97 Rabbi Yussi commenced. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Legistus Vayikra 1915. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment has a literal meaning, but we learned that this portion has within it precious supernal words regarding the precepts of the Torah. This verse is explained at its end as it is written. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. Come and behold, two levels are mentioned here justice and righteousness. What is the difference between the two? One is mercy, meaning justice. Denoting Zeir and one is of judgment meaning righteousness denoting Malchut one perfumes the other 98 when righteousness is triggered it judges everyone collectively since there is no mercy or forbearance in it when justice is triggered there is mercy it may be that there is only justice then comes the verse that says in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor what is the reason righteousness does not judge the one and forgive the other but all are judged collectively similarly. You shall not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty but treat all equally with righteousness it may be that all judgments are in righteousness alone hence the verse says shall you judge your neighbor one needs to join them together for one is not found without the other this makes up the completeness of judgment 99 what is the reason for all of this because the holy one blessed be he is found there in the place of justice for this reason wholeness of it. Judgment is needed just as he does below the Holy One blessed be he does above come and behold the Holy One blessed be he sets up the seat of judgment at the time the judges are sitting this is what the verse says he has prepared his throne for judgment or justice Tehillim 98 from there is set up the throne of the Holy One blessed be he by what is his throne righteousness and justice as the verse says righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne Tehillim 8915 the judge needs to sit at the seat of the king if he harms one of the mighty is similar to causing harm to the chair of the king and the Holy One blessed be he departs from the midst of the judges and does not sustain in their judging what does he say now will I rise says Hashem Tehillim 126 and the Holy Spirit said be you exalted Elohim above the heavens Tehillim 576 section 17 you shall certainly rebuke your neighbor we learn of the precept to rebuke someone who has Sin and to show him that he is loved so that he should not be punished but repent God rebukes people in secret unless they will not repent in which case he rebukes them publicly we also learn of the gentle illusions that should be made to someone who is too shy to be rebuked openly one should never mention another sin in public since God is concerned about the honor of every person even the evil doers are AI may him to the faithful shepherd 100 you shall not hate your brother in your heart you shall certainly rebuke your neighbor Vayikra 1917 this precept is to rebuke one who sinned and to show him that he loves him in order that the rebuker should not be punished with regard to the holy one blessed be he it is written for Hashem reproves him whom he loves Mishlei 312 just as the holy one blessed be he does in rebuking those whom he loves so should man learn from this practice and rebuke his neighbor whom he loves with what does holy one blessed be he rebuke man he Rebukes him with love in secret if he accepts his rebuke it is well if not he rebukes him openly among his friends if he accepts that then all is well if not he rebukes him publicly before all if he accepts all is well if not he deserts him and does not rebuke him anymore he leaves him to go and do as he pleases 100 and when he explains his words at first he informs him privately to rebuke him to alert him in order that no other person should know about this this is between them if he accepts his rebuke it is good if not he informs him among his friends when there was a high priest in the world he would place upon him an illness that confined him to bed and the friends of the holy one blessed be
that he himself will understand what is going on and will desist from such sin therefore rebuking if it is not helping then you shall rebuke if that does not help and publicly your neighbor as mentioned before from that point on it says and not suffer sin on his account meaning do not rebuke him anymore 103 another explanation for and not suffer sin on his account is that if one man rebukes another and it so happened that he rebuked the other publicly he must not mention before him the sin he committed that is surely prohibited he must speak in general and not mention the sin he committed in public nor ascribe the sin to him since the holy one blessed be he is concerned about the honor of every person even the evil doers and of rai may in the 104 he commenced and then the voice of the shofar shemot 1919 the segment was already printed in the portion of ai from paragraph 85 to paragraph 109 up to where rabbi abba and rabbi yehuda arrive and thank rabbi ACHA the conclusion of the article which appears to have been missing there is presented here section 18 mixed kinds and garments mixed of linen and wool the rabbis discuss the observance of the statutes and rabbi laser tells them that you are my witnesses refers to Israel 105 rabbi Abba, rabbi ACHA and rabbi Yehuda rose and as they were going rabbi laser said you shall not go up and down as a tailbearer among your people you shall not hate your brother in your heart you shall not avenge nor bear any grudge vaikra 19 16 to 18 we have already dealt with this and all the friends have been attentive to these but let us say something about this portion it is written you shall keep my statutes you shall not let your cattle gender with a diverse kind you shall not sow your field with mingled seed neither shall a garment mingled of linen and wool come upon you Ibid 19 106 rabbi laser said you are my witnesses says Hashem and my servant whom I have Chosen that you may know and believe me, Yeshayah 4310, you are my witnesses, refers to Israel. We learn too that this refers to heaven and earth as it is written, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you. Devarim 3019, Israel are witnesses one on the other, while heaven and earth and all are witnesses upon them. My servant whom I have chosen, this refers to Jacob as is written and said to me, You are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified, Yeshayah 493, and therefore. Fear you not, O my servant Jacob, your Maya 3010, some say it refers to David, and David is called my servant as it is written for my own sake and for my servant David's sake, Yeshayah 3735, whom I have chosen, refers to the heavenly David, meaning Malchut section 19, I am he, Rabbi Lazar explains what it means when God says, I am he in scripture 107, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, Yeshayah 4310, he questions what is meant by I am he. And answers I am he meaning I who chose David and Jacob I am he literally meaning I include Jacob and David, Jacob being the secret of Zeir and the secret of he and David being the secret of Malchut the secret of I they are literally the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechena before me there was no L form David as we learned the Holy One blessed be he called Jacob L as it is written and called it him L the Elohim of Israel Bershi 3320 so we see the Holy One. Blessed be he called Jacob L this is the meaning of before me there was no L form neither shall there be after me hence I am he everything is as we said neither shall there be after me because David is called so since Malchut is also L Zeir and and Malchut are the secret of I are one and there is no other after him section 20 mixed kinds and garments mixed of linen and wool shed we learned that when God created the world he created a Supernal force above every single thing even every blade of grass all the chieftains that have ever been designated as rulers have always behaved according to one supernal law and the chieftains themselves are then called laws as each of them is appointed over a certain aspect of law the mixture of species below uproots each force from its proper position and causes confusion above when people behave as they should they attract the holy supernal spirit to them but when they perform evil actions they draw a spirit from the side of evil we are told why it is acceptable and proper to mix wool and linen in the tzitzit but not elsewhere Cain was a mixture from the other side and therefore his sacrifice could not be mixed with that of Abel who was of the same species as Adam and Eve from the side of holiness 108 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he created the world he appointed everything and each one in its position either right or left he appointed upon them supernal forces. And there is not even a blade of grass in the ground that does not have a supernal force upon it in the upper worlds. Everything that each does or is done to each is under the strength of the supernal force appointed upon it from above. All their practices are based on judgment. They move through judgment and are supported by judgment. Nothing can move out of its support outside 109. And all the chieftains since the day of creation were designated rulers over each and everything they all behave according to another supernal law that is received by each one as it is written. She rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens. Mishlei 3115. Since they receive this law, all the appointees are then called laws. This law given to them comes from heaven and so they are called the statutes of heaven. How do we know that they stem from heaven as it is written? For this is a statute for Israel. Tehillim 815. Zeir and being the central. Column called Israel 110 therefore it is written you shall keep my statutes Vaikra 1919 this is because each is appointed to a certain aspect of that law for this reason it is forbidden to mix species or to bring about one species to another as this uproots each force from its position and denies the fame of the king 111 he questions what is mixed kinds Hebkelaim and answers its explanation is like one who puts his friend in jail so he will not be able to do anything as the verse says in prison Hebkelaim Yermea 3718 and Kelei Yimai is similar to Kelei meaning mixed kinds means prohibition prohibiting the forces from their performances mixed kinds its explanation is confusing causing confusion in the supernal forces and it denies the fame of the king as it says neither shall a garment mingled of linen and will come upon you Vaikra 1919 112 come and behold it is written but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it for on the day that you eat of it you shall surely die Bershi 217 we learned it is due to changing the commands of the king replacing the tree of life wherein everything is complete on which faith depends and joining another place we learned that in everything a person needs to show an action similar to what is above and perform the action as need be if the act is changed for something else he brings down upon him something else that should not rest upon him namely the other side 113 come and behold when a person shows an act below in an appropriate fashion as need be a holy supernal spirit is attracted to and rests upon him however when he exhibits an act down here in a crooked fashion that is not appropriate then another spirit that he does not need which turns the person to the side of evil is attracted to him and rests on him what attracts that spirit upon him the answer is that act that reflected another side 114 he questions it is written she seeks wool and flax Mishlei 3113 what is meant by she seeks and he answers the Shechina that is called the woman of worth seeks and asks about the wool and linen as to who mingles them for the purpose of punishing him one may then question why mixing wool with linen is permissible in the tzitzit fringes and answers we establish that clothing is correct meaning according to the commandment perfectly made meaning since the precept is so it is not considered an inappropriate act 115 more is there to expound she seeks wool and flax to do vengeance against one who mingles them together but when does holiness hover upon them meaning at the time when the act is done with its perfection as it is written and works willingly with her hands of it and with tzitzit we have established there the Shechina a mixture of wool and linen is done with perfection and so does nothing that will draw upon the other side therefore this is permissible about this it is written and works willingly with her hands but when the act is not found to be perfect, then he who comes to join wool and flax together draws upon himself a spirit he should not have, namely the other side. 116 who proves this matter, Cain and Abel prove this as one came from one direction and the second came from another direction. Abel came from the side of holiness, Cain came from the side of the other side. For this reason, you should not mingle them when both brought sacrifices, they were not joined since the sacrifices of Cain were made. Distant from before the sacrifice of Abel, 117, therefore neither shall a garment mingled of linen and will come upon you. The words upon your unspecified IT is telling you also not to allow another spirit to rule over you. A person needs to show deeds that are proper and appropriate when doing this act, there will hover over him a holy spirit, a supernal spirit that will sanctify him. He who seeks purity will be sanctified as it is written, sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for I. Am Hashem Vayai Kra 207 118 it is
Firstlings of his sheep one sacrifice is not like the other. The secret of this matter is that Cain was a mixture namely of one species with another species, an inappropriate mix, for he was from the other side, not the species of Adam and Eve, and his sacrifice came from that side. Abel was of the same species as Adam and Eve, namely from holiness in the bowels of Eve were joined these two opposite aspects, namely two different species, and because they were joined together, no benefit came to the world. And they were lost 120 until this day that aspect still exists, namely the destructive force of Cain and Abel, one who exhibits himself performing an act of joining this union awakens these sides together, meaning this mixture of Cain and Abel he may get her and cause to hover over him an inappropriate spirit. Israel need to awaken upon them a saintly spirit in order to be holy so that they will be in peace in this world and the world to come. 121 it is written and the priest shall put on his linen garment Vikra 63 and he shall have the linen breeches put on his flesh and shall be girded with a linen lit cloth girdle Vikra 164 he asks why is it called cloth had bad meaning alone had bad had and answers this is because this linen must not be mixed with another therefore the verse is not written and the priest shall put on his linen garment but it says cloth meaning single 122 he asks why must the priest be exhibited with this namely wearing linen which alludes to another side and answers these flax garments need to be exhibited when working by the altar of the burnt offering when he is cleaning the fat pieces of the burnt offering for the burnt offering is connected with idol worship and evil thoughts meaning that for thoughts about idol worshiping one must bring a burnt offering for this reason he must appear wearing flax alone not mingled with wool as we said in order to attain atonement for man for all those sins coming from that side 123 when he enters the temple, the place where there is perfection, where all the services of perfection are, though there is found jointly wool and flax, we should not fear this. Just as we said regarding the tzitzit fringes, there are found and joined all these species of above all the vessels of the temple, including many kinds differing from one another. All are included there, similar to those above. Fortunate are the children of Israel that the Holy One blessed be He gave to them a true Torah, Torah of faith, and loved them above the other nations, as it is written, I have loved you, says Hashem Malachi 12, section 21. All its fruit shall be holy for praise giving to Hashem. Rabbi Shia talks about the concept of fruits that are brought forth only from another force above and that do not become ripened until three years have passed. In the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy for giving praise. The secret meaning of this is that in the fourth year, the Congregation of Israel is paired with God and there is praise and joy. The fourth year is God Himself and it is also the congregation of Israel. Then the hosts are appointed over the world in their proper place and everyone is blessed and the fruits are now in perfection so may now be eaten until this point it is forbidden to eat of the fruits. 124 Rabbi Shia commenced to say after him and when you shall come to the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food but in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy for praise giving to Hashem. Vayikra 1923 to 24 and when you come to the land the friends have established this but come and behold a tree the secret of Zeir and produces fruits only in the soil denoting Malchut the earth brings them forth and shows those fruits to the world the earth produces fruits only from another force above it meaning from Zeir and just as every female produces fruits only as a result of the force of the male 125 and that. Fruit that Malchut called earth produces does not become completed in its fullness until three years meaning until Malchut receives three columns from Zeir and then the force upon it is appointed above until its completion after completion its force is then appointed upon it and then the earth is established by it prior to three years meaning before receiving all three columns the earth is not yet established by it with Zeir and then and not completed with him after Malchut is perfected and set. Together then there is perfection 126 come and behold the female namely Malchut before she becomes pregnant three times the fruit of her stomach namely the soul is not complete for it is necessary that there be in her the three columns and in each column three columns because three pregnancies correspond to the three columns and in each pregnancy tray are three columns after three pregnancies the female is established by that fruit and they are reconciled this is because Zeir and is. Right Malchut is left and they are in agreement only by means of the central column that includes three columns since in each column there are three columns then that fruit meaning the soul is the perfection of it all and the beauty of it all and after the fruit emerges and sprouts from it before three years it has no force from above because the fruit on its own also needs the illuminations of the three columns like Malchut the secret of three years and its growth is completed therefore prior to this there are the uncircumcised years and Levi with three pregnancies passed over him was the chosen of all the tribes as he is there for his mother by him she was set and with him she was made fragrant 127 after three years a supernal force from above is appointed upon it but in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy for praise giving what is meant by holy for praise giving this means praises with which to praise the holy one blessed be he until this point I ask the literal Interpretation from this point on let us explain the secret of the matter in the fourth year the congregation of Israel namely Malchut is paired with the Holy One blessed be he denoting Zeir and and one joy is prevalent as it is written holy for praise giving meaning giving praise and joy at the same time 128 he questions what is the fourth year and answers it is the Holy One blessed be he denoting Zeir and we learned that the fourth year refers to the congregation of Israel. Denoting Malchut as she is the fourth leg of the throne the three columns Chesed, Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and are the three legs of the supernal throne and Malchut is the fourth leg of the throne there is no contradiction against what was said that the fourth year refers to the Holy One blessed be he as all is one since the Holy One blessed be he pairs himself with the congregation of Israel and so you can call him Zeir and and call him Malchut then there is holiness and holy. Praise giving then the hosts are appointed over the world upon each thing as is proper for it from this point are all blessed and it is permissible to eat the fruits as now everything is in perfection there is perfection above and below meaning perfection of Zeir and Pen and Malchut 129 and until everything is completed from above and below it is forbidden to eat of it he who does eat of it is considered like one who has no share in the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel. Since that fruit exists without holy supernal authority namely Zeir and Pen because this will not hover over it until it is perfected and it is without authority from below namely Malchut since the earth force did not ripen with it prior to the passing of the fourth year since the coupling of Zeir and Pen and Malchut has not yet taken place as earlier mentioned he who eats of it shows that he has no share of the above and below Zeir and Pen and Malchut if he made a blessing over it, it is considered a Blessing in vain as up to this point the Holy One blessed be he does not hover over him and he has no share in him may the merciful one save us from those who are not mindful of the honor of their master 130 fortunate are the righteous in this world and the next about them is written but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight Michelet 418 at that time in the future to come the serpent that dwelt before with the female will depart meaning who was nurturing from Malchut and instead the male will come to hover in its place as before meaning with a union that will not cease as there will be no one to set apart this mating and everything will be perfect section 22 you shall rise up before a hoary head Rabbi Yussi says that the hoary head in the title verse is a scroll of Torah for which one must stand up and that a man should rise up before a scholar because he has the supernal holy image of the supernal priest on him Rabbi Shimon says that the Torah scroll is the written Torah and that the Torah scholar is in the state of the oral Torah. Lastly we are told that people should repent before they reach old age. It is more praiseworthy to act rightly when still in one's full strength. 131 Rabbi Yossi commenced you shall not eat anything with the blood. Vayikra 1926 this verse has been explained by the friends in several places and also all the verses that follow each one explain them according to the revealed Torah. However this verse needs exposition it is written you shall rise up before the elderly. But 32 the words before a hoary head refers generally to a Torah scroll for which you must rise and so did Rabham Nanasaba the elder when he saw a Torah scroll he would rise and say you shall rise up before a hoary head. Vayikra 1932 similarly man should rise fully before a Torah scholar because he has a supernal holy image which indicates the supernal holy priest the secret of supernal Abba called. Old man as the verse says and honor the face of the old man of it who is in the world meaning the Torah scholar who is with you in the world which alludes to the supernal old man supernal
Similarly, it is written, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth. Kahilat 121 Rabbi Lazar said, Certainly this way is ready before us, this being the way of the Holy One. Blessed be Section 23 For Hashem knows the way of the righteous. Rabbi Shimon tells us that God knows and looks after the righteous and that the wicked perish simply because he does not walk with them. He also tells us the difference between a way and a path, saying that a path is a recently opened path that has not been walked upon by many people. 133 He commands, For Hashem knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Tehillim 16 He questions what is meant by Hashem knows and answers this is that the Holy One, Blessed be He knows and looks after the way of the righteous to benefit them and defend them, and He walks before them to guard them. Therefore, whoever sets on his way needs to see to it that this way is the way of the Holy One, Blessed be. He so that the Holy One blessed be he will participate with him for this reason it is written for Hashem knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked shall perish it perishes on its own since the Holy One blessed be he does not make himself known to their way and does not go with them 134 he questions sometimes it is written a way and sometimes a path what is the difference between them and answers a way implies a way that all the feet of people tread a path is a recently opened path and has not been trodden long by many people about this path does the verse say but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday Mashili 418 amen may it be his will